What's up, everybody? Gotta share the YouTube link. Stand by. Thirty more seconds. All right, people, let's get started. Welcome to the third total edition and second week of Jaguars Film Room. I'm going to be going over the All-22 Coaches film today of the Jaguars' offensive snaps against the Colts. Yeah, that's about it. We're just here to learn. All right, before I do anything else, actually, sorry, i got to test one more thing, which is to see if this new paint thing works. Stand by. Looks like it doesn't work. Sorry about that. I'll try a different technique next week. Uh, I was hoping that you guys would be able to see my mouse, but I found out that you couldn't. So, again, next week, or on Thursday for the defensive show, I'll try to have some kind of cursor visible, so it'll be easier for you guys to watch with me. For now, we're just running through it. A lot of motion. Split zone to start the game. Knew James Robinson was going to get a big workload based on what uh, Coach Peterson was saying in press conferences this week. Manhurts has to get over there. It's a good fit from the uh, Colts nickel guy. Surprised that's not Kenny Moore. Whoever 20 is. Oh, Jordan Love, there's safety. Manhurts is playing 40% of snaps. Heard through Twitter user Pins of Jack, but doesn't really do much. Solid first play. Chris Manhurts, expiring contract. Evan Ingram lining up at fullback. Doesn't really do anything on the block, though. Hmm. Hmm. 
68 and 17, 78 and 17, excuse me. Both just get beat to the sideline here. ETN's fast enough. Cam Robinson, I mean, nice block against a corner. Maybe a safety again. But uh, got to have fast guys all around. Athleticism all around for the uh, outside plays. We know Engram is fast. He's just got to execute blocks, which is more of an ask. Um, Barch is an important player. Can't spend that left guard next offseason. So. We have a third and long situation set up by two early down runs. Last week I talked a lot about how on, more so on misses from Trevor. I thought misses were more so based on just trying to lead the receiver. You can see him do a pretty awesome job of leading the receiver here. In a space he knows only Marvin Jones can get it. Like That's tight coverage. There was a penalty on the defensive back. Just a great throw. Trying to look at the protection here. ETM looks like he got bulldozed, but at least he got in the way. I didn't even really notice Lawrence was under that kind of heat. Let's see what they were showing him on this third and long. Double mug look for the linebackers. Single, high, cover, one man, blitz. Goes to his man beater, passive sticks. Easy money. Pitch and catch. Makes it look easy. Given what the defense has given him again. Saw Carson Wentz do that twice with quick throws over the middle against cover three. Pitch and catch. With the pressure. Nice rep by both tackles. Mm. Norwell gets, or Scherf, not Norwell. There's a lot of different terminology. <laughs> I think Scherf is trying to make that a pancake. Apparently, pancake is apparently when you put a defender on the ground and then lie on top of them, it's pancake. So Scherf was trying pretty hard to pancake here against... It looks like Rover Stewart maybe is 94. Oh, just didn't write it on. Someone named Lewis, actually. That was funny. Good blocking there on by the O-line, though, on the first down pass. Yeah. Gus Bradley, cover three defense. Trevor gets it out quick. Better job than last week. I mean, last week, even towards the beginning of the game when he was getting hit a lot more, I didn't think he was necessarily getting hit too often. Or, I shouldn't say that. He was getting hit too often. He wasn't necessarily getting rid of the ball too late. He stuck on to, like, one or two progressions. But for the most part, Washington's D-line was just feasting. But uh, good for Lawrence to kind of recognize, especially after that third down with pressure. Got to get the ball out quick. So now with, uh, what was that, second and five-ish, we're getting outside zone. So we have a nice initial setup technically, because this guy beats his block, but at least this guy... Man, I forgot you guys can't see my cursor, my bad. Um, 90, probably Buckner, beats his block, but Forner still kind of gets it in his way. Uh, Cam just doesn't have great leverage on this one, even though he's blocking the guy right here. Robinson knows that if he goes inside on Cam Robinson's block, then the block would be shed fairly easily. So he's looking to try to bounce it outside, kind of, sort of, but then decides just to, or I guess I should say, 
the play probably would have been a bounce outside based on the leverage of Cam's defender. But Robinson just decides to cut it up because Fortner was able to get in the way enough to make some space. At this point, Robinson can't just like get to the edge quickly. Fairly quickly, but coming off an Achilles tear. Third and five, went for two yards. Wow. Nice job by uh, Trevor getting the ball out with blindside pressure. Cam just kind of whiffs on Yannick. I didn't really notice Yannick the entire game, to be honest, on Sunday. But, I mean, look at this rep on the left. Just kind of shoves him aside. Cam, and I think both tackles played fairly well the whole game, but this was an ideal. Looking at coverage. Looks like we have cover two. Just a lot of a lot of curls. Interesting depths on these curl routes because certain curl routes you'll see, at least most of the ones I've seen, and it's all been at similar depths. And so Lawrence will have get the ball out on his back foot, basically regardless or of who he's throwing to. He just has to decide who he's throwing to. But on this one, there's kind of different depths run by the receivers to attack different areas of coverage. I don't know if. Uh, Yeah, I mean, those seams weren't really open against the cover two. Lawrence goes through a progression, finds an open guy before coverage can get there. Again, makes it look easy. Ball's out. Nice effort by Engram. Showed a lot of awesome effort. That was super cool to see. Fourth and three, Dougie P, let's go, midfield. Saw a lot of crossing routes on in week one, which is probably due because Washington was playing a lot of man defense, so that's a good way to beat it. But crossing routes is definitely a big part of the Peterson offense as well. Again, nice job by Trevor on a little thing here by having the patience to wait to get it to Zay as he had a um, defensive end it looks like drop back into coverage so on this fourth down the Colts are only sending three actually interesting looks like the middle linebacker is probably in maybe not a spy because he's getting pretty deep but it's just Essentially, instead of what you'd see on a normal cover one man play, is a deep safety, man coverage across the board, and four rushers. But here they're sending three rushers, and they have two middle rat defenders from the linebackers who are taking away crossing routes. With this guy dropping back. So, I mean, Indy calls a good... Oh, crap, I just skipped to somewhere totally off. Oopsies. Was that it? So this guy does a good job because he's supposed to take 51 off the edge of linebacker. He's supposed to take Zay there, and then he just gets beat. And so Indianapolis ca caught a good coverage on this one, but Zay was just able to run away from the defenders. Again, Lawrence does a good job of making sure Zay is past the guy before firing it. Just kind of like a low-key thing that helped with the yards after the catch. Lawrence is like extremely, almost to a fault at times, as we see with the miss throws, in my opinion. 
but Lawrence is just like extremely wary of everyone on the field. It's like Chris Paul, point God. I actually have a different Lawrence basketball player comparison, but I think I'm going to sit on it. That was a funny interaction. Marvin Jones drew the flag on unnecessary roughness or whatever it was, and then got his own flag for taunting. Offset, a pretty solid play. Again, how quickly Trevor not just processes this, but post-snap too with the footwork, the progression. How quickly he gets it to the, the ball to his receiver. It doesn't look like a ton, but... Gotta appreciate the little stuff, because once we get Jamar Chase, that's when the big stuff is coming. I mean, that's like a split-second read. Lawrence here is reading uh, 45, the guy who makes the tackle. As soon as he sees 45, kind of sort of go to the flat. Shout out to Motion to guard Kirk. Lawrence is able to zip that ball in there. Good play design, good quarterback play. And a nice catch to finish it. Clean offense, pitch and catch. Like what we like to see. Looks like the offensive line held up pretty well. Also like to see. Talked a bit about the uh, double pullers last week. See it again here. A lot of the power plays that Jacksonville has run with the rushing offense, not necessarily a majority, but I would say a significant amount, have been with two pullers. So it's interesting to see. An orbit motion from Kirk, too. This feels like it was stolen out of uh, right out of Kansas City's playbook. That's what my guess would be. Seems like KC is pretty obvious because Doug used to coach there as offense coordinator under Andy Reid. But it uh, seems like a lot of San Francisco Kyle Shanahan's concepts as well. This one feels like Kansas City, though, with the power and the orbit motion. Looks like Cam maybe lost his block. Wow. I mean, Grover Stewart just, like, disrupted the heck out of that play. Barts needs to do a better job. He got, I mean, it's Grover Stewart, who's very strong, and Cam is responsible for finishing the block, but this is more so on Barks than Cam. Um, sorry, this is more so on Barks than Cam, just because he has to get a little bit chip first so that Cam can then get in position to finish the block, or to get in position to finish the block, and then Barks progresses to the second level. So he needs to do a little bit better job of helping out and then, like, because by the time it gets down there, like, the play is dead. But Grover Stewart is really good. So. <laughs> Man Hurts doesn't really do anything. <laughs> Common theme. Pitch and catch. On a second and 11. Is that Kirk out of the backfield? That's There's at least three times in this game that Kirk either started or ended the play in the backfield. Didn't do that at all last week. Someone got a quarterback hit on uh, Cam. So Cam, not with the hardest start to this game. Kind of whiffed with his ends a little bit. Whoever that pass rusher was did a good job of spinning back. But by that time, Lawrence was already rid of the ball. In terms of the coverage, we got... Um, one robber. The way that I learned rat from robber, I referenced rat earlier, is when 
the defender in the middle of the field on cover one man is a linebacker, and then robber is one that middle defender is a safety that comes down. Um, if the rat, if it's a rat defender, then the safety is probably in man coverage, and then vice versa. If it's the robber slash safety that's in zone over the shallow slash medium middle of the field, then the linebacker is probably in coverage or blitzing. So we've got one robber because the safety is. I'm assuming coming down to play zone over the middle. Um, so we have another, these curls again, which maybe is another, I mean, it didn't work against the cover two zone. It's working here against cover one man. So label it down as a man beater. Lawrence looks like a... a Zay Jones wasn't his first guy, but did a good job of sticking on him, I guess, because he was pretty open. Saw the how off Kenny Moore was playing in the slot. Zay Jones does a good job of... That's a nice job by Zay Jones, actually. I was going to compliment Trevor's um, ball location here because he puts it kind of like outside of where the defender's, where the defender's leverage is. Um, but it's a nice job of Zay by like kind of working towards the sideline a little bit to get away from the defender, and then once he catches it, comes back with a move to pick a couple yards. So that was a little bit, that was a little nifty by Zay. Good job all around by the offense. Set up third and short. First down. I wonder how far that guy came over from. 45. Oof. So that's a blown tackle by Marvin Jones. But still got the first down. Move the chains. That safety was right there. I mean, like, oof. Would have been nice to see if what Robinson could have done in that little bit of open green grass. Uh, so, blown block by Marvin Jones. But first down, fairly clean offense so far. Maybe like two, three blown blocks. That's about it. <laughs> wow. It's almost nostalgic to see this because the Jaguars did this a decent amount Um Trying to remember who the coordinator was that drew it up the most. Regardless, Leonard Fournette did this a lot with the Jaguars, especially a certain season, which is blanking me right now. Maybe it was when Jay Gruden was there. Uh, but you'd see that same thing where motion out of the backfield, all the block, all the receivers on that side are blocking, so it's pre pretty clearly just an outside screen. So cool to see Travis Etienne get it. Nice effort and blocking by um, Evan Engram there. Decent job by Zay, too. Cool play. Easy first down completion. That's what we, the kind of stuff we like to see on first and second down rather than these zero or one yard rushes. ETN doing some stuff on the inside. Said last week, if ETN can clean up pass protection, which he's small, so like that's kind of a big if. Uh, but especially show consistent some consistency inside the tackles so the Jaguars running backs don't have predictable tendencies. That would be big time. So <clears throat> pretty solid run here by ETN. Gets away from that block pretty easily. Contact balance burst up the field. Man, this one sure had a really nice. 
he kind of ducked this guy, the first one, and he got just perfect leverage on the second guy. That was a nice play by uh, Brandon Scherf to clear that hole. Barcher with a nice cleanup, too. Was that? Huh. Okay, so this is actually a trap. But it seems like typically you would have trap designed to go hit the A-gap on the right side. So basically between the center and the right guard. On this one, trap is more so to the outside where they're hitting between the right guard and the right tackle. So the right B-gap. Um, so pretty in interesting wrinkle in my opinion. I've seen a lot of little stuff. I, I, like, I don't think the players just like blew their blocks and then it happened to be the B gap where ETN had a bunch of space. That seemed like it was a trap power play to the B gap. Pretty cool. That was a nice play. I liked that. We have our first of a few read options with Lawrence having the option to keep the ball here on what's is this third and short? Oh, second and 12. First and ten. Okay. So Lawrence is reading 54. He's out there. Lawrence could beat him to the edge, honestly. He's that much of an athlete. I don't know how much room there is off the screen to the right. Uh, but, uh, like, even... Like... That's just like how good Lawrence is. He's not Lamar Jackson, but he'll make the first man miss and get four yards. So on first down, I think it was smart of him to, even though he could beat 5-4 in my opinion, it was the, technically the correct read to hand it off. And then on the other side of the play, we just have Fortner blowing a block. Good run defense by two interior guys on the Colts. Just completely screwed them up. The Jaguars were supposed to be a wide zone offense based on, I mean, mostly their offensive line coach being from Minnesota and being like a Bill Callahan protege. But then also Peterson does a decent amount of zone stuff. And then also just league-wide trends, a ton of wide zone stuff. But while the Jaguars have done both, it seems like their most, um, or just their best concept has been more power and gap scheme blocking than zone, which is pretty interesting. So we'll see if they kind of like lean into that. I should have just paused because I didn't even watch this play. We'll see if the Jaguars kind of go into more of a gap and power-based running offense because that seems to be their strength through a game in one quarter to me, or if they keep kind of going with Zen, which would be more beneficial on those uh, bootlegs. We'll see. Just something to note. Here we're faking a power run concept and throwing a pretty cool tight end screen. Lawrence with a nice job putting some touch on it. <laughs> this, for any fans of uh, It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia, this reminded me of when D ran out of, excuse me, ran out of some store and like into like a car and just bonked her head. That's what that looks like to me. If you know, you know. Cool play call. It's, I like that using that you near know, the red zone too. When we don't have like Jamar Chase, you can just throw it up to. Touchdown. Foreshadowed the Kirk backfield stuff earlier. I mean, you probably saw it yourself on Sunday. So as Nate Tice broke down for The Athletic, which you might have seen on YouTube or Twitter, the route that Kirk is running here is an angle route or Texas route, which you've probably seen in Madden. I referenced some Madden plays last week, so if Nate Tice is referencing it, then that means I'm doing something okay, hopefully. <clears throat> 
here we have basically what you would expect to see, especially from like a receiving type threat. Maybe not necessarily out of the backfield, but from a tight end or receiver on the left side, top of the screen. See a flat, and then Zay Jones going with his out route to try to make like a two level kind of window. And so, as Nate Tice pointed out, this defender, 23, may have been expecting a flout because of that. Um, that's just kind of like what concept makes sense. But as I said on last week's show, Doug Peterson's a big wide trail guy, which is another Madden play, or at least I know it from Madden. But on trail, the concept, um, as I described it last week, like Evan Engram would. Or no, Zay Jones would run on slant, except he would probably be lined up further to the right on the line of scrimmage, and Engram would be off line of scrimmage. So Zay Jones on the line of scrimmage would run on the slant, and that would take out the first middle guy, basically, in the coverage. And then behind it, Zay Jones would run, or Evan Engram behind Zay Jones would run kind of like out to the flat and then back to the inside for a trail route. Um, so this is almost like... That wouldn't really work with this formation, so don't take it literally for this specific example. But I'm just trying to say that it's a Texas route and an angle route, but the concept is almost trail because Engram is running not a slant, but a crosser across the line of scrimmage to take away, or across the formation to take away the first middle defender, and then Kirk follows in that empty void. So it's a Texas route by a running back, by a receiver, pardon me, out of the backfield, trail concept, touchdown Jaguars. That was awesome. It's almost <laughs> like it's boring when they're good almost. There's nothing to whine about and point out. <laughs> Have another zone read, another one where Trevor keeps it or gives it up. Pardon me. This time with the zone read, Jacksonville said, We're not going to do a zone read, we're going to do maybe this you call this power read instead of zone read. I don't know, but it's a power running concept with a zone read because I think it's like reading the defender's zone read. Because you're reading the zone. Anyway, power running concept with the read option, zone, whatever you want to call it, part of it locked in. So the Jags coaches must have set, seen something similar where it's like, we're not doing great on zone, so let's try to mix in a little bit more man gap power concepts. Um, just not really great execution by the line. Seemed like out of place. Maybe that one was put in playbook recently. Not great blocking, but cool. Cool play in general. Hopefully this offensive line will get like humming by midseason. And then by then, like ETN will have the rush shaken off. J Roll will get his back to 100% as he possibly can be. And then we'll really be cooking. But for now, we see another trap play. Trap, I should have maybe explained it a little bit earlier, is when one of the guards or center maybe basically like leaves um, a defensive tackle unblocked and then someone loops around from the other side to block him and it kind of creates just like a natural open space. So here we see Scherf on our left basically just letting his guy in front of him slip by him and then getting blocks downfield. And then the other guard... Um, Smoothie Boy is coming around to block that guy who got into the backfield easily. So, that part of it was executed well. Side with Scherf on it. But, Fortner just kind of blows a block. That one's on Fortner. A shame because so far in run, run offense, that might have 
I don't remember specifically a blown block he's had so far from the regular season in the run game until then. Seemed like pretty solid protection up front. <clears throat> I mean, honestly, a solid job by Fortner. Essentially one-on-one -on -one against Buckner. I know that Buckner got the technical quarterback hit here. Maybe not. Definitely a pressure. But, like, Lawrence, if he really needs to, could have maneuvered a little bit in the pocket. I mean... There's not really space right now to step up, but if he had shuffled and then right there been able to step up with all the other guys being blown backwards. So, in other words, pressure's solid in this one. Fortner's a rookie, fairly weak center, so not really a surprise to see him uh, get pushed back by an all-pro and DeForest Buckner. Third and ten. We've got one robber on this third down. A lot of cover, one man coverage on third down from Gus Bradley, which isn't necessarily a surprise. Defenses tend to spike up man coverage on third down a lot, especially third and long. And we know Gus Bradley's a guy that likes his one high safety coverages so seeing a lot of one high or cover one man without blitzing on third downs isn't a surprise from Gus Bradley so far the Jets it's not a surprise to the Jaguars as either Jaguars either so they try a double move with Marvin Jones and Marvin's just slow basically they also had a double maybe not I mean, Kirk was basically just running. Zay looks like he has some separation, but this robber defender here, the safety, would have surely seen him. But he, uh, this robber defender dropped back once he saw Lawrence. So this was a good play call and... Good decision by Trevor Lawrence. What's missing here is Jamar Chase to win this. Like, protection, good. We know we're getting on defense. We call a uh, man beater. We have a dagger concept down here. Dagger, that can work. I mean, it works against a lot of crap. But then we also have... One-on-one -on -one beater here. So Trevor picks the right decision. Doug calls the right play. Just need Jamar Chase to finish plays for us sometimes. Everything we've seen so far has been really nice and is what elevates this offense from bottom of the league to middle of the league. As I was saying last week, a Jamar Chase type, just ball-winning Receiver on the outside is what elevates this offense to elite. I say Jamar Chase because he's a high investment, young perimeter receiver, to be clear. So now I just say Jamar Chase. Marvin Jones got hit this game. Nice catch. This play calls a little foreshadow. Good play call. Pitch and catch. I don't feel like we have to watch that one again. Good to see uh, Trevor getting out of the pocket, though. Didn't want to. I think that's the first bootleg we've seen this week. It seemed like they Jacksonville tried it a lot last week, and then it was just getting blown up a lot by Washington's D line. So they kept it here. Their first bootleg came in the third drive. So it's definitely something they want to run because it's something Lawrence is really good at. But 
they made sure not to spam it too much early in this game. And when they eventually did call it, worked well. Some split zone here. Nice um, physicality by Marvin Jones. Or 26 actually kind of like leaps into his box kind of quickly. Uh, so Marvin does a good job of, even though he's a little bit late at first, recovering, getting a body on his guy, opening up this hole from James, for James Robinson. Or actually, I mean, well, who's the one that got there? He's still got there, so... Another Marvin Jones. So far, we need someone who can replace two blown blocks from Marvin Jones and a deep vertical route in third and ten. So far, that's what the offense is missing, other than further experience in the offensive line. Pitch and catch, baby. <clears throat> third down again on both of the cover three looks that Lawrence has seen from just a true drop back game without like a screen or a play action or anything like that he just goes right to this uh sweet spot the empty spot the open spot in the middle short area so I mean, maybe something. Could like pop up later in the play with deeper progressions, but as we saw, again, the first half of last week's game, really the all, all game, but especially in the first half, looked like the Jaguars couldn't run any deep concepts, and that was a concern. So coaching staff has done. Coaching staff and Trevor have both done a good job of kind of recognizing that. Kong stuff that'll help out the O-line, get the ball out quicker. And then Lawrence, like on plays like that, even when it's not a short, quick concept where the ball is designed to be out in like three set or in three steps throw, no matter what. Like that wasn't that play. That route's going all over the field, but it was just a good job by Lawrence of getting the ball out quickly. A lot of cool option routes from his Jaguars offense. Option plays, I should say, not routes. That one might have been stolen from Greg Roman, maybe, in Baltimore? Or maybe it's not as cool as I think it is, but, like, they have... It's a split zone with an extra motion and an extra read. I mean, it, it was kind of mucky over here, so good thing Lawrence didn't keep it. Although in Gogwe, he did, did kind of, he didn't crash. He read the, he was staying with the quarterback. Man, that's a cool play design by Jacksonville. James Robinson with a nice run, doing what he doing what he does best, reading defenders' leverage on blocks, finding open areas before they open up. So, I was. That was an impressive play for me by James Robinson, but that's nothing new, but also by Doug Peterson. I liked that. <laughs> he just kind of squeezed through there on the end. I want to see if this is an RPO real quick. Nah. I wonder if they have something built off of that. Like, either this is a play that has a counterpart, which is why I was expecting to see an RPO at the top of the screen, or maybe an option. But maybe Lawrence is just being a team team guy and kind of faking the ball in case it makes a defender hesitate.
James Robinson, king of ex or invisible yards, as I like to say. Trevor Stewart blows this play up from the start. Again, Jacksonville not doing great on uh, wide zone plays. This is a good block by Cam for what it's worth. Because you can see, like, this has massive play potential if Fortner just, like, isn't so anxious to get outside. Fortner just, like, they need a little bit more patience. Which is, like, it's not like guys are just getting bullied so far with the blown blocks. It's more of just, like, I think it's little things that, like, experience and coaching. It'll be better down the line. So Fortner just a little bit more patient. Make sure that block is blocked and then get to the second level because both Barch and Robinson do a good job here. I mean, there's a lot of space if Grover Stewart doesn't like force Robinson to get outside. So technically a blown block on Fortner, but nothing horrific. Just get coached up on that. James Robinson is very good at football. Those are your takeaways for that play. Let's see what down it is. First and 20. Maybe Cam held his guy on that one because Robinson was forced to go outside. Kind of cool play action out of power concept. So from here, it looks like the pressure or the O-line holds up fairly well. I mean, Fortner, like, I was going to say maybe Fortner could get a little bit more on the outside, uh, but, like, he didn't know where Lawrence was. Like, Fortner is, like, that's a good rep from Fortner. He, was, he seemed like he was ready for the stunt to come, so... Downfield, Lawrence's first read is here on this comeback from Marvin Jones. This would be a or, – well, it is a good cover play against cover three because either Stephon Gilmore is going to be pretty far back deep and then Marvin Jones would be open, or as we saw, Marvin Jones was covered by Stephon Gilmore and that allowed Kirk to run behind. Marvin doesn't does a nice job, I think, of coming back to the ball, and then he wants to go upfield, but he kind of knows that Kirk is behind him or can sense him, so he doesn't go to just the same place Kirk was going. So, shout out to Marvin for, I mean, that like Sutter step. Ugh. It was kind of easy for Gilmore to break quick, so not the cleanest route at the top of his stem, but solid spacing afterwards. So I can commend him for that, and then. Just a nice job of Kirk kind of following through, finding the open space, Lawrence finding him. So again, Jamar Chase, if he's here, Lawrence probably just fires this ball off his back foot. But uh, he does a good job of kind of staying patient, getting out of the pocket, finding another guy. First and ten. Eight minutes left in the second. Mm. He's so good. He's so good. Makes me so happy to see that. Split zone from the Jags again. Nice finish by Barch on that block. He got a little 
power up from Cam, but still a good rep by Barch. Fortner almost blew this play, but then it also kind of sort of turned into a touchdown. Like, I don't really know who Fortner is looking for here. He's supposedly a super smart guy, so, like, I don't know why it took him so long to get over there. Hmm. Maybe this play was just designed to get more inside than I thought. So, it was really actually, like, Fortner did okay. He was just out of position because the power-up from Cam and the block by Barch just, like, opened up this other hole. Good job of Robinson just kind of hitting immediately, brushing off contact, brushing off contact, brushing off contact. So, I mean, that was just, like, a good play. It wasn't, like, even though it wasn't where the gap was technically headed, that's the beauty of zone blocking, is that the running back just has the freedom to be able to go to wherever the hole ends up being. And James Robinson is freaking good, so it worked there. This play remind me of Kamara. Specifically, his long touchdown against the Packers last year when he had like just had a crazy like four touchdown or maybe three touchdown game. But the patience by ETN just kind of like walking up, following his block, knocking the head. I thought that was cool. Nice to see ETN getting involved too. First down. Putting together a little bit of a drive. This play is always open against cover three. Benefit of using a tight bunch here. This is the maybe the first just true quick. I'm sure it's not, but like a lot of the stuff that Trevor's been firing quick on has been like not true quick game where it's three steps out no matter what no matter which receiver you're targeting all the receivers are running short routes so this is one of those quick plays ball is supposed to be out Lawrence does it well I mean this out route is just like money against cover three it's a good call against uh, predictable defense nice job by Marvin it's funny how the uh, I don't know if it was by intention or not but the Jags were just eating against Stephon Gilmore today. Pretty much any corner would allow that catch for what it's worth in that coverage, but so is it third and one now? Second and one? Second and two. Hey, might as well go back to what's working. Kind of sort of looks like inside zone split with uh, the split guy coming across, but Kirk is really just in motion to get these receivers or get these linebackers, excuse me, kind of flowing towards the left before the play even happens. Because even though the play is coming to the left as well, or to, towards the left side of the line of scrimmage from our view, the cutback lane, wherever it is going to happen on this play, on the zone concept, will happen towards the other side against the flowing defense. So not zone split, but it is inside zone. Very really nice clear out by the Jags. I'm not sure who's supposed to get Kenny Moore, but regardless, good run bit, fit bit by Kenny Moore. So, wide zone, we need we need some coaching tips, but all the other running schemes Jackson has deployed has been fairly solid. We do have a wide zone here.
is just one that Forner has to finish. He gets in good initial positioning, but then Grover Stewart is just a grown man playing against a rookie. So I like seeing the positioning there. It was good by Fortner. He's just got to hold his block. But if he's not doing that in a year or two, once he's like kind of put on more weight and been in the weight room, I'll be concerned. Right now, it's like it's kind of something you have to deal with as a weakness of the offense. Kind of like like you're not going to get Jamar Chase right now. It's something you have to deal with. Second and seven. Kirk coming out of the backfield. First empty look. Chags probably went empty last game, but this is almost definitely the first empty look of this game. Another play with a lot of curl routes. With the Jags. So it's a third time with this like curl route play, and it's the second time against zone. Both of the times it was against cover two zone. And both times against zone. Lawrence got it quickly to his guy on the outside. This time, we don't have Jamar Chase, though. Third and seven. We have a nub formation here, which is... Actually, I think it's technically not nub because Evan Engram is not connected to the line of scrimmage. It's a three-by-one look because it's three receivers on the top and one at the bottom. Nub would have been if there was a tight end connected to the line. Maybe since Engram is a tight end, it's still nub since he's the sole guy over there. But either way, it's a three-by-one formation. Uh, something I've talked about and maybe I didn't cover in the last stream. Maybe it was an article. But we see it here. And as I said earlier, give her a whole. Man, that stiff arm looks even better from that angle than the broadcast. We've got more main coverage from Bradley on third down. Another crossing route wins. Lawrence finds his guy, does a good job of giving him some yak opportunity. I mean, it's third down. So let's see if there's something deeper or if – let's see what the options were. I think this is a linebacker that Kirk has matched up against, but he clearly has inside leverage. So – wasn't really open early. I think Trevor could have like gone back to him late if the play broke down, but um, the Colts were also like sending five, so Lawrence does a good job of just getting the ball out quick. Because hypothetically, like Zay isn't open with the safety over the top. Hypothetically, Marvin is open here. Those are really your two options, in my opinion, is if Marvin gets open or if you have Engram underneath against this, again, cover one man third down look from Bradley. This time he just, instead of having a rat or robber defender, he sends a blitz. So Lawrence gets it out with plenty of time. Just kind of recognizing what's in front of him. I'm sure that if it was fourth down, I think we would have seen him kind of keep his eyes more downfield and either wait for Marvin Jones to break or for Kirk to just get open. Um, but since he recognized man blitz, get the ball out to your open guy, hope he makes a play like that one. And then even if it doesn't make a play, we know with Doug Peterson, the Jaguars are aggressive on fourth and short. So I think it was good decision-making on Lawrence. I don't know where, like, I would have done the same thing. Probably not, because, like, I'm not Trevor Lawrence. <laughs> would have thrown a pick if I was playing in our murals. So I shouldn't ever say that. But that's hypothetically what he should have done. Another outside zone, technically, maybe sweep, depending on your terminology. Um, actually, this is funky. 
it's not just an outside zone. We have more. We have the two blockers, so it's technically offset power. I'm trying to think of the terminology I learned a year ago. But we basically have two polars, which again is noticeable because not every team in the league has a lot of plays where they have two polars on power plays. At least I don't think so. Um, and then we're going the opposite way as a polars. So it's like a reverse or offset. There's some kind of terminology that I was trying to think of. I don't really know, like, Cam, like, shouldn't be expected to get all the way out to Ngakwe and then come back upfield. Like, I think Cam did his job. Was it an RPO? Because this is another one where Lawrence pump fakes as if, like, maybe there's a counterpart for this play. But, like, Kirk doesn't even, like, try running a slant. So it feels like there's like should be an extra read considering Yannick is just like completely uncovered, but there's not anything else going on the other side. I mean, maybe Lawrence is supposed to keep this. Like maybe they took it from Lamar's playbook and Lawrence would like keep this and just follow his blockers because it does seem like there's a lot of room for activities over there. Um, yeah, I don't really get this play. There should be something else going back, whether Lawrence keeps it for a run or a pass. So the idea in general is cool, but maybe maybe someone messed up. Feels like Cam and Taylor both set so wide here that like it's meant for Lawrence almost to like kind of step up. So like technically Yannick gets around, but like Yannick does this every play where he just like runs around the tackle but doesn't actually get there. Actually, Yannick has a pretty solid rep on this one, but like Lawrence is just a freak and steps up. But it's not one that I'm necessarily like. Cam just has to keep blocking more than anything else. So Lawrence does a good job feeling the pressure, stepping up. You can see how much um, Agnew... It would be better to show on the other side. If I had to nitpick this throw at all, I mean, it was like borderline perfect, and this is why you get Jamar Chase. Even though I, Jamar Chase would be filling Marvin Jones' role on this offense, I think. Maybe Zay Jones, because Zay Jones is technically the X, but like Marvin is getting the kind of looks that I would want. Jamar Chase to look to get. Anyway, it's cool by the um, coaching staff to like set up this play where it's just like your fastest guy is playing the X, uh, which you can see because he's on the boundary or he's on the line of scrimmage. So they're like, Marvin was too slow. So we're just going to get Agnew to just sprint and then it'll work. So it was like a good thought and so kind of cool coaching. Um, but then Cam just like doesn't stick with his block enough, even though Lawrence does have a pretty deep, deep drop back. That's something I noticed last year on film was that on notices like hitches from the pocket, the drop backs were so much that it was like just because he had his like long legs, I think, and a wide stance or whatever you want to call it. Um, so I think that's this one is actually a little bit on. Lawrence and Cam in terms of the pressure. Lawrence, like, could have maybe... Like, I feel like Cam was expecting him not to drop back as much, basically. So that's why he wasn't really trying. Trevor corrects whoever's mistake it was, though. Puts a good throw. Nice coaching, as I said. Um, 
what I was going to say earlier is that like Lawrence, I think, puts it a little bit too far to our left or to his left because Agnew seems like he does – he like it's supposed to be crosser, but he just wants to get past this guy and then kind of to curve. So it's actually possible that this is more on Agnew for going vertical and then kind of crossing over because if he had just gone kind of vertical the entire way, he could have been in the right spot. Either way, the ball went through his hands – Tough catch to make, but that's why Jamar Chase makes this offense top five to finish plays like that. So that was cool all around, other than not having Jamar Chase. More curls. This time we see it deeper. Everyone's at about the same length. Uh, honestly, I think, or this is similar to what we saw that I was describing earlier where they run at different depths. I think Kirk is just gaining more depth on this one because it's a third and 11. Maybe uh, previously, I don't remember what the down distance was, but if it was like a second and 10 or even a third and five, Kirk probably would have done his middle route a little bit shorter. Either way, seeing a lot of this curls play, this is like the fourth time we've seen it. Um, no one's really open. Crap. Hit the wrong button. All right, we're back. Let's see if Kirk was like really open. Honestly, like Lawrence could have just like fire the ball in there, but he would have had to have been looking pretty hard. It looks like, uh, hmm. I mean, if he threw the ball, like, just hard as crap, I think he could have gotten it into Kirk, but what we've seen a lot from Trevor Lawrence, especially last season, was holding on to the ball not necessarily like at fault, I would say, in like a horrible way, but just because he was like waiting for stuff to happen downfield and it wasn't happening. So on this play, even though something is kind of sort of happening downfield, it's you can kind of see the growth and uh, maturity from Lawrence, and I think the coaching staff's impact on him as well. Of like we can live to see another down, especially on third down, because our coaching staff is aggressive on fourth, and like. At this point, our offense is good enough that we have a good four and we can consistently move the ball. We don't necessarily need to force a throw on third down. Get it to a playmaker in space. I think the Kirk throw is one that Lawrence could have made to sum it up. But I'm okay with this decision to get it out to his playmaker, pick up yards, make it easy. Mm. Cool to see ETN looking a little bit more just like natural, just less stiff. All right. Halfway through. What was the score at halftime? 14 0, 17 0, 17 0. Wide zone, not great. Just got eaten up all around. We'll watch it back one more time. But continuing the theme of doing kind of sort of inconsistent because of the youth on the offensive line with pretty much every other concept, but really inconsistent with wide zone. Solid protection up front. 
Let's check the coverage. Looks like we've got quarters. Quarters is almost like two man um, because the guys on the outside are matching vertically. But instead of two man, where a lot of time you see trail techniques, so like the corner will get behind. So like 31 would get behind Marvin Jones. And like, it's kind of like what we saw on the Shaq touchdown that he allowed to Terry McLaurin. On two man, he trails and gets behind the receiver because he knows he has this deep half back. On cover four, it's still, he's matching vertically, but he's playing more off because he has a fourth of a deep shell to worry about rather than the flats. So hopefully that made a little bit of sense. We're seeing quarters coverage here from Bradley. Um, a rare non-cover three or cover one look. We've got cover four here. Gilmore is like, I think it's more of like the position that Gilmore was played, was playing maybe for the Colts as their number one corner, then um, a potentially number two corner. Yeah, number two corner. Because like no corner is going to make that play on the coverage. That's another one that we saw from Gilmore earlier. So it's a good job of Lawrence getting in and out quick, not letting any pressure, especially now that we have the lead, we're just picking up little little things. Here we go back to Evan, or to Evan, but also to Gilmore. Solid protection up front, but getting the ball out quick is nice. Help out the O-line. We got trips at the bottom, another three by one set, which maybe, maybe is, isn't nub. And then we just have a one-on-one -on -one man beater against man coverage. Very impressive by Engram. Just great athleticism, honestly. Like driving in there, planting, getting back out, throwing a stiff arm, picking up the sticks. Super impressive from Evan Engram. Start out with the bottom of the screen. What's going on there? Got a little levels concept, kind of. Dagger levels all the way above. One clear out route in the middle, and then two in breaking routes. So, kind of answers on two different sides of the field. The bottom of the field with the trips could have, probably would have done well against, um, like, probably man, but not so more of a zone beater. And then you have that your man beater at the top with one on one. Cool play design. Really nice to see Engram win that. Like, Jaguars receivers don't win a lot one on one. So that was just really cool to see on third down. I think this is, like, if Scherf can get to over to his man. Hmm. Dude, what is going on? Watch Scherf. He's just, like, trying to hop on him. He's desperate for a pancake, maybe. Uh, 44 just does a nice job of, like, almost doing a ghost move on Scherf to get outside. And Scherf still gets a hand on him. So, I think the blocking is all pretty solid up until... Like, again, like, it's the, this isn't, I mean, if it, it was a crack block by Jones, so it's not, like, wide zone, but it is an outside play, and again, like, the Jaguars just haven't been great on these outside stretching plays. It is a good job by both of the Indianapolis linebackers. Um... Just need the guards to block the linebackers on that one, and then it could be a home run by ATN. The wide stuff isn't working a ton, so even though it's nice to get athletes into space, maybe run between the tackles a little bit more. This looks like uh, almost similar to the... Actually, 
I was going to say to the Fournette play, but clearly Kirk is... I'd say Kirk is probably running an option route here. There's a lot of stuff. <clears throat> haven't seen a ton from this game, but against Washington, especially in their man coverage, Kirk was running a lot of option routes from out of the slot. Um, so maybe that's a curl, but I think it's probably technically an option route. Um, in terms of the protection, this is kind of cool. I haven't really talked a lot about pass protection uh, responsibilities, but Lawrence likely called out a uh, slide left. To his left because like Taylor Taylor is ignoring the edge rusher not because he's stupid but because he's smart because he says these one two three four five or you can't see my cursor the five Colts on your screen farthest to the right are who we're worried about based on the call that most likely Trevor but maybe Fortner or Peterson made on the protection for this one so the whole offensive line is sliding to their left because they're worried about the five guys on their left. And then it's just up to Robinson slash um, Lawrence to figure out the free rusher if slash when he comes. So he comes on the right side because the protection is sliding left. And then Trevor just gets it out to his hot guy because there's a free rusher, which is James Robinson. Robinson could have hypothetically been the one to pick up this guy on the end to finish off the slide left protection. Um, and then I'm assuming the hot guy would have been Kirk. So the reason they got caught into left is because um, Kenny Moore was kind of creeping. So it was pretty cool coaching slash job by Kenny Moore to make the the Jaguars offense changed it to slide left so that they could take care of Kenny Moore. Uh, and then Gus Bradley sends pressure from the other way. But since Robinson isn't staying in for the protection, he's the hot read. Get it out to him. Um, so good coaching by the Colts to get that free rusher, but better job by Lawrence in the offense of setting the protection which like fell into the Colts' plans, but then Lawrence just does a good job of knowing that pressure's probably coming and knowing who his hot read is on this play. Good job of Taylor of doing his assignment. Good job of Robinson doing his assignment. That's clean offense on a blitz look. And it wasn't very unique or scary of a blitz look because it's Gus Bradley and it's not like Wick Martindale. Um, but it's still nice to see the Jaguars cleaning up blitz pretty easily. Eek. Zone split. Marvin Jones blown block. I mean, Jones has to guard or like get a good angle and on a good on a linebacker as opposed to a receiver, but. This ball is supposed to go more inside, and Robinson just kind of busted outside. Oh, I mean, it wasn't just Jones. There was other people there, too. I mean, this is 9-4. It's supposed to go to the right, like, where the eye is, basically, and, and the Jags logo is just straight downhill. But because of the leverage um, by created by 9-4, Robinson reads it and then bounces outside, or else he might have had... He would have had to beat 58 in the middle, but <laughs> you can see, I mean, Fortner has like a tough, I think Fortner does the wrong thing here at first because it's combo blocks. Unless this is duo, either way, regardless of the run type. Fortner has to um it's not 
definitely inside zone split, not duo, excuse me. Um, Fortner just has to help out on 94 instead of 90, then 94. Maybe he was coached that because DeForest Buckner is really good at football, and it's Ben Bartsch, so he's helping out the like worst guard that's next to him. Um, but in that, in that case, Scherf has to win this block despite a tough angle. But next time, we need to see Fortner help out 9-4, then get downhill to block 58. Or 20, maybe. Instead, Fortner kind of sort of doesn't do his job. Norwell kind of sort of... next. I keep calling him Noro. Scherf kind of sort of doesn't do his job. Robinson is just reading leverage here and goes to where the opening is. In this case, the Colts played good defense. So just getting those like little things down with the interior of like wanting, wanting the understanding and leverage and patience of how to kind of help out on those combo block blocks before getting to the second level. Maybe that's why the gap schemes have been help working better. Just because, like, with gap, you have one guy, and that's your responsibility, is technically, is essentially, like, whoever gets in front of you. Um, so, they've got some stuff to work on with zone blocking, but I'm hoping they'll be able to get coached up, because it seems like coachable errors, not just guys getting manhandled. Got a second and long here. Another levels concept at the bottom of the screen. Um, I mean, the Colts just guard the middle of the field pretty well on this one. Marvin Jones is kind of sort of open, but he would have to get it. Lawrence would have to get it over 23. Kevin, uh, Kevin Moore? Kellen Moore. Kellen Moore? That's the Cowboys guy. Kenny Moore. <laughs> I wonder if I was calling him Kellen this whole time. have like a designed up and out at the top. Pretty cool concepts. Just didn't work against the Colts defense on this one. Trevor just kind of took what was given to him. Solid protection up front. Just a call that didn't really work against the coverage. Still was able to get four yards. That's nice. That's what we call a floor. Another three by one set with Engram at the top or isolated. I hope we see more of this because so far, almost. I was going to say, so far, Engram's done well as the isolated receiver. Not on this one. This looks like a drop interception on broadcast, and it was a drop interception. But Lawrence here is basically just giving this guy a chance and hoping Engram comes back to the ball. You can kind of see, like, Engram like, doesn't even know where the ball is. Like, he's, like, it's pretty good defense by Gilmore. But this is why you get Jamar Chase, even though it's Engram and not Griffin or Jones, is to win, like, the isolated routes when you have third and long so that when the offensive line is good enough and the quarterback is good enough, finish a play, box him out, do something. Um, let's see what happened to everywhere else. I mean, Lawrence is just looking for who can be that guy. He was looking for him with Marvin early this game, Engram right here, a lot Zay Jones last game with uh, two drops in the end zone on contested catches or catchable passes. One of them was contested, one of them wasn't uh but again another curls concept by the jaguars just don't have anyone that can beat it like zay jones kind of got off his guy but like you just like in order to call this concept you need someone that can win on it and so far the jaguars don't have someone that can do that at least consistently that can win man coverage intermediate to deep routes that's what's limiting the ceiling everything else is super cool though that's a complaint but it's like a nitpick complaint because like 
clearly this offense is humming. I'm just thinking of like what the next prompt is. So we get off the field there. Or get taken off the field. A little bootleg, that's nice. Save the bootlegs, don't spam them. It's part of the why we need to clean up wide zone instead of just going, all right, we'll run between tackles and so that this stuff is more of a threat to opposing defenses. So the coaches need to clean up run blocking a little bit, and the front office needs to get a guy that can win downfield. Pretty good game for the Jaguars' offense other than that. Very clean. So that man hurts is the one that's a fullback on this one. So, again, maybe something they still have, Kansas City or uh, San Francisco. Shanahan has always liked using a fullback, at least for several, several years now in SF. Um, Peterson, or excuse me, Reed in Kansas City is just more recently going towards more of like the power concepts and using a fullback. So, I'm just kind of wondering where the use of the fullback, especially getting him into the formate or into the backfield via motion just curious where that comes from but uh blown block by kirk that's all right kirk's not like a physical guy you shouldn't be like <clears throat> running to his side super often asking him to be blocking even though he does play slot um that's more of a concern for me for someone like Marvin Jones, who's a bigger body, and that's his role, asks him to block more than Kirk's. But it would be nice for sure to see Kirk make that block. Here we have another trips formation. But again, we also have Kirk coming out of the backfield. So it creates the second or third empty look. Of the game. Second down. Lawrence and Kirk are communicating. What do we want to do? That's what we want to do. Pitch and catch. Nice play design, play call. Execution by receiver and running back, or receiver and quarterback. Cam got pushed a little bit, but overall, good job by the offensive line. I haven't said Jawan Taylor's name at all today, which means he's doing well. He's the only guy whose name I haven't said, other than when I pointed out that he was doing well. If you listen to the Jaguar Report podcast, you know I never uh, lost faith. Again, very cool concepts by Doug. We got a puller, we got motion, we got a fake, we got a read, we got Trevor Lawrence going, getting outside and then just cutting it up. That was like super cool. Again, he's not Lamar Jackson, but like this is what like we want Trevor as a Lawrence for is for high leverage situations. So third and fourth and short, and then in the goal line and in condensed areas. If you can pick up like the first down or the touchdown or what's needed in the short area of the field. That's where he's going to provide value as a rusher. So nice play design, good execution. That was cool to see. Again, cool uh, display of vision by ETN. Nice play call. I was in with a buddy during the game. He was just screaming for a screen. And then it came on this one right when he screamed for it. I commemorated him on the first one, but nice job on Trevor on all three of the screens that were thrown this game. Not including the Leonard Thornet type, I think. Because um, that was just like kind of a swing screen. But the other ones where there was just, there was just a lot going on, and he was able to kind of have some touch and get it to the guy. This is just gorgeous. I mean, super cool route by Kirk. Good design by Peterson to get him into space and have the matchup. I mean, that's just e easy money against um, it's 
first down. We got a slot blitz. Man, Goss's defense is just even more bland than I thought. This is literally just four verts. And against uh, cover one defense with your best newly high paid receiver against a linebacker, that'll do. That'll work. Won't try to figure out the protection on that one, but obviously it looks like the um, Jags did a good job picking it up. Taylor put the guy that was blitzing off the edge in the dirt. Again, Trevor's just looking for his ball winner downfield. Kind of have a bender route in the seam by Kirk. Um, kind of interesting to see the Jags get a little more aggressive with these first down play calls, first down passing play calls, despite being up 17-0. But we like to see that instead of just running down the middle every time. Coaching with the lead is very pretty. It's easy to hate when it's done poorly, but it's underappreciated when it's done well. And Doug, this game has done a good job of mixing up different types of running play calls, even if the execution isn't there every time. Um, and then kind of, sort of, calling pass plays on early downs as well. This looks like Stick Nod just like terribly ran. Like, hypothetically, we'd have two out routes here, and then normally with Stick, you'd see the vertical guy too. Um, and then you have one of those two outs that would come on Stick, one of the two kind of fakes out and then comes back in sort of on like on a invert whip route, which is what Zay Jones was doing there. And then Engram will fake going out and then go up and then just did like a terrible job there. I mean, he got held a little bit by the safety. Maybe that's what the flag was for. Um... Maybe, maybe this is Galaxy Brain. Maybe Lawrence saw the hold, so he just threw it up. Because, like, clearly he has Zay there, and it's only first down. So, like, I'm giving Trevor a little, the benefit of the doubt here um, by saying maybe he helped saw the hold and then just chucked it. But it's also certainly possible that Trevor just kind of stuck on the read and was trying to have a guy make a play. Don't need to do that anymore. We have Doug Peterson to scheme stuff open for us. And then we can take the shots. Well, the shots we've tried to take just haven't worked because we don't have Jamar Chase. But that wasn't... Unless he saw the hold, and I was right about that, and Lawrence threw it because he knew he was getting the flag, we would have liked to see Lawrence keep that and not necessarily force a deep throw when we're up big. Lawrence is like... Or Peterson's like, all right, let's calm down a little bit, boys. <laughs> let's get going up the middle with some power. I mean, what is Scherf doing? Again, just stuff to clean up on uh, run concepts with blocking. Sure, for, like, just make a block guy. He kind of overran it. This looks like it might have been duo. We 
we can tell it's duo as opposed to inside zone because Jawan Taylor, aka the backside tackle, is basically just making a 90 degree angle away from the ball and saying, you're not going anywhere. Let me angle you off. Whereas the front side, there's two front side blocks in the front, hence why it's called duos, because there's two double teams. So we see the center and the right guard, and then the left guard and the left tackle. Double team the tackles, and then... Yeah. Robinson finds the open space for a first down. It's meant to be a... That one came on second and short. It's a power play, even though there's no... No one pulling a second six, but. First duo of the season, unless I missed one last week if I was because I was breezing through the runs. But a lot of a lot of different stuff from the Jaguars run game. A ton of different stuff. Going back to split zone here. More no, this is just inside zone again where Kirk is not uh, down blocking on the end, which we would on split zone, but just trying to draw the linebackers a little bit with his motion. Oh, nope, it's trap. Did I make the same mistake with the first one too? But it's trap because of what we talked about with one of the guards letting someone go by him, the other guard coming around. Again, this is supposed to go up the middle. And Buckner just kind of blows it up. Robinson's got nowhere to go. So this one's on Scherf, who just has looked good at times, but in general has not paid up to his contract. Or no. Excuse me, this one's on Barch. But this is honestly more of a good play than Buckner, in my opinion, than a bad play by Barch. Because Barch is expecting the guy to have like kind of flown up field unblocked but Buckner recognizes super quickly that he's not being blocked and then kind of like ducks to get to where the run's supposed to go so like I don't even think this is like something that Jags coaches are going to have to like go to the film room to clean up with Barch this is like an all pro player making an all pro play making James Robinson bounce it a little bit and then other defenders come clean up great play by Buckner it's funny because trap is like what you run because of guys like that, like so that like Aaron Donald will just like run right by into the quarterback and you can like use his momentum against him. And so that makes like Trap is like designed to play against like guys like Buckner, especially in Buckner's even front where he just kinda like gets after the uh quarterback and is really only responsible for one gap. That's just a really good play by Buckner. More cool run stuff. A lot of motions. Maybe that's part of the reason. Like it's, It might take a little bit for this unit to really gel consistently. As there's just like a lot of movement, a lot of spacing. It's not necessarily an easy run scheme if you're running all this stuff. I wonder if the Jags just kind of like, since they had the lead, they're like, let's see what works and what doesn't and what we can clean up in the future. I think I said something about that last week in the offense. I might have been talking more about the passing game, but it was really nice of the Jaguars to have a lead in this game so they can try stuff out. You saw that a lot more. I mean, they run that curls play like four times, but you're seeing it with the running game. A ton of diversity, seeing what works, what needs to get cleaned up. Again, short yardage, red zone, high leverage, carry from... Lawrence, I think even if like it's in between the twenties, and if it's a first and ten, Lawrence would probably just give it up at almost every single time, because it's like not worth him running outside on just first and ten. 
this could have been duo. I mean, it's just, just inside zone, technically, maybe. Just push forward. I wonder if Doug could coach a really good block and tight end. I've been saying Jamar Chase this whole time, but like Luke Farrell kind of sort of blows this block. I've called out Marvin Jones a couple of times. Chris Manhurts earlier. Like, I wonder if, like, I mean, I can't say, like, a a Dallas Goddard is, like, the kind of player that would be really, really good in Peterson's scheme, even though Lawrence, I think, would be best with Jamar Chase. A versatile, physical tight end. Evan's cool, but I feel like that would unlock a lot of stuff for um, Peterson's offense. I said foreshadowing earlier. Jaguars ran this play, and it went to Marvin Jones deeper for a first down. This time, just got to beat the guy. I was so scared watching that play live, I thought for sure. Just being a Jaguars fan, it was going to get messed up. But it's a new era. It's the Doug Peterson era, Charlie Lawrence era. All right, I'm going to try to get through this last seven, eight minutes pretty quick because we've got a three-possession ball game with ten minutes left. Two pullers again. Less than ideal execution again. I mean, 45 just had an incredible block. Like, maybe Ingram's supposed to get that guy, but that might just be another example. Like, the Buckner play I just went over a minute ago of just really good defense. Like, it's also easy for Indianapolis to key on on one plays in this situation when the, the Jags are going to run on just about every first down with this lead in the fourth quarter. Taking what's given to them, this is a cover... Two instead of cover three, but still taking the underneath stuff, even if there's going to be. Or no, it's curls again for the fifth straight time. He loves this route. They ran curls so much as play, and it didn't even work that often, which is why do they keep running it? I wonder if Peterson just wanted to show so few stuff in the passing game that he was calling Blaine plays a lot. Because he knows what works in the passing game, other than the connecting on explosive plays deep. Now he's just got to figure out the running game a little bit, so he's being super diverse with that and super bland with the passing offense. A little galaxy brain, brain theory. One of Peterson's favorite concepts, spot, where we have a curl, a flat, and a corner all to the same side. Lawrence, I think this is the second time I've seen it run in the regular season, and the second time or both times, um, it went to the curl. Cool way to kind of set it up with a motion by Engram. Again, Peterson might be being bland. That's a Peterson concept through and through. His spot might be bland with passing concepts. Not letting the Chargers, excuse me, see anything on film. Excuse me, geez. Split zone here. Too tight and set. I feel like we mostly saw... A lot of 11 out of Jackson earlier. It's not really anywhere. Uh, this play doesn't get blown up, but at the same time, like Robinson is supposed to go inside there, but he's reading leverage as he does. Bart's just... needs to do a better job of getting initial leverage so that he can just kind of block at an angle. Because Fortner like, helped out a little bit, or enough, I should say. Again, it's just these little things with the run game. They're just barely off on like right place, right time sometimes. But not so far off that it's atrocious. Another wide zone. Another two-yard run. That's just Fortner not holding a block.
third and ten. We got a bunch formation. Hmm. Looks like it might be cloud coverage. Um, my guess on this would be cover three cloud, but it's definitely zone coverage. Lawrence gets this, throws this ball late. Guess what play the drags are running? Curls for the seventh time. And it didn't work any time. Zay is open there. That's like Trevor's first, like, legit. That should be a first down mistake. He had one mistake in week one, like, blatant error, and it was an ETN overthrow. I'll call this a blatant error by Lawrence. I mean, maybe he doesn't see him. He's, like, just, I don't know where his eyes are, obviously. I mean, it's, like, Maybe his third progression, so that's the reason he's late. So I'll, it's not as blatant as I originally thought. Um, maybe you'd still like him, like to see him get there a little sooner. With that said, it was the fifth time the Jaguars run that ran that play. I'm sure the Colts were expecting it by that point. So if that's the one miss, like I'm fine with that. Seeing what works on the run, run offense. Did I only gain one yard? Maybe there was a penalty? We have duo here with motion. You can see Jawan opening up with 90 degree angle, blocking off the edge, and then two double teams in the middle. So Jaguars thought that works decently the first time. James Robinson got a second first down on second and six. Works pretty well again. I wonder if we're going to see a decent amount of duo looks against the Chargers. Let's see if wide zone checks or works. One more time before the game ends. Ah, no. Perhaps the first Jawan mistake? Yeah. Jawan just got pushed back. Maybe, probably the first mistake I saw, or definitely the first mistake I saw all game from him. It just didn't leave Robinson anywhere to go. It's almost better if you, like, commit one way or the other for Taylor there. Like, I don't know if this is what coaches would tell him, but from my perspective, it's like, get the guy going in one way or direction so Robinson can just make a cut in a decision rather than just, like, kind of sort of holding your block and then Robinson kind of sort of waits for the defender to peek and then Robinson goes the other way. I'm just spewing. Split zone. Hmm. James Robinson, Mr. Picks Up Invisible Yards. I don't know how he got around two sets. Two minute warning, second and 11. Trying to ice the game. Jags did a lot of these weird motions, but had zero um, penalties on them, from what I remember. So that's a good plus after last week. There was, I think, two illegal formation or illegal shift calls. Here I'd just like to see Taylor be able to like come off of the line of scrimmage cleanly. Maybe like Jones should be a little bit closer or just make contact faster 
But if Taylor had been able to kind of get along cleanly, then he would have just gotten to his area faster, which would have let ETN get to whatever area he wanted to go faster. Instead, ETN has to be patient and then kind of has to cut it up. So, another small thing to look at for the coaches. This one's more of inside zone than wide zone, I feel like, but they're definitely getting pretty lateral here. <laughs> Does Cam say bounces to the right? Maybe? That's weird. But some pretty solid spacing. Nice job. Good block by Cam, even if he doesn't finish it, just to get a little bit of space for Etienne to burst up that gap. Just on the back two... Past two ETN rushes. The just got finished running blocks by the tackles. Last look. Last play. Better job of John Taylor there. Nice way to end it. All right, people. That was it. Thank you for joining. Um, yeah, I'll have a recap posted tomorrow at some point on Big Cat Country. Rather than try to collect my thoughts and spew them all right now, I'll just save it for the article. But fun watch session. Uh, you can get my full takes tomorrow again. Should I say it a third time? No. Nah. All right, bye.